It's me. It's Jem here. Jem from the RC Spark Studio, for those of you that are familiar with our lovely obsession of a hobby. I am in the studio today giving Aaron the day off, and I am about to do something that I have never done before. And actually, if you would have asked me about five years ago, would never have put it on my radar. But I figured, heck, why not? What could possibly go wrong? Today, I'm going to build you a truck. A truck from a box, of course, and I'll go into some of the details here in a moment. But I'm excited to learn how to do this. One, so I can always have a truck that's up and running. Two, I might as well put my money where my mouth is, or however that saying goes. I've gotta learn how they work so that I can actually get myself out on the trail whenever I want and not feel so bad when I break somebody else's truck. Okay, come along with me for the journey. Let's uh, ooh, do this together, I'm excited. So, I've, like I said, I've never done this before. We're gonna go through this whole build together from start to finish. And the assumption is that I'll come out at the end of it with a wonderful, beautiful, new, tent scale truck. Come on, let's do this together. All right, that one's going. <laughs> I took a bit more than I should. All right. All right, welcome to the RC Spark Studio, where I am about to embark on a journey I have never done before. Jem here, for those of you that don't know me. I am the, well, the other half of the RC Spark Studio, I guess you could say. I'm the one who's generally, you know, shows up here and there in guest appearances, but I figured, ah, who likes a guest appearance when they can do a starring role for one particular episode? So here we go. We thought, well, I really, really, really love my SCX-10 honcho, Pinky, as you may or may not know her. And where is she here today? There she is for a good old point of reference. Let's just move this guy out of the way here. There's my Pinky truck. So if you're familiar with this ride, obviously you're gonna be familiar with Axials already. Uh, this is my Axial honcho my XCX10 already, which I've had more fun than I know what to do with in this one. She has now been modified beyond belief. Has original stickers, I think, in the original body, and that's probably about it. Um, and some of these little ties that are original, but I don't know if that really counts. Anyways, we decided, let's build me a new truck. And that's what we're gonna do here. That's what's in this big box here. And here we are. And what have we got? We've got a real treat for you guys today. We have got the brand new SCX-10 De Part 2. This is a 2000 Jeep Cherokee body kit. It is a 10th scale electric four wheel drive kit. And usually I'm more of the uh, ready to run type of gal, but I figured, <laughs> come on, I can do anything. I can do anything, right? How hard can this be just to build an entire truck? So let's just do it. One of the, they had made a ton of improvements, uh, but the one thing that they really did speak about was the AR high pinion axles, AR44, sorry, high pinion axles, and just how they're actually shaped is a much more um, heavily, heavy improvement that they had on what, what they had before. Um, so hopefully we should, uh, you know, it's good to have your axles because really without axles, you, you, don't, you don't really have a truck. Let's take a little look at what's in this box. Holy cow. First of all, nice, nice, uh, nice packaging, Axel. Of all this stuff, oh, there's some of my tools that are gone. Doo -doo -doo. Let's take all this stuff out and we'll go through it piece by piece. Everything is literally there for you to run and let's just do this. There we go. Uh, Well-labeled bags, bag G. My tires, of course. Item four, that's not bad. Bag H. Ah, miscellaneous, always a good bag to have with a whole bunch of stickers. I haven't quite decided if I'm going to stick with the stock body that's on here. Or depending upon how this actually mounts, I might actually have a body that we painted, gosh, it must be years ago. And it's this beautiful color that I've just been drawn to and it is uh, it's pretty much all ready to go. It's beautiful, like no stickers are on it, so I'll have to actually dress it all up, but we'll see how that all works out, and when we get to that point, we'll decide what body type we're gonna go with. The instruction manual. We are gonna go through it all together, but man, great pictures. Look at all that. That's a lot of great information in there. I look forward to reading that tonight. 
as we go through this build, as I'm going to dream, dream about the build. Good, the cross wrench that I will need. So some of the tools I'm just gonna have it laid out. So one thing I am learning as I'm going through this particular build and as you come along on this journey with me is get all the materials out that you actually need. So I have, um, you know, my hex wrenches or hex screws and pliers and utter butter and the battery that I'll be using plus the upgraded ESC the uh, RX4 from Tekken. Uh, we've had a lot of success with the Tekken goods, so we figured why not keep it and just keep it going. So this is what I will be running with for my ESC in my new rig. I don't know, ladies, have you found any of these in your washing machine? They're terrible, man. They, they wreck all of your clothes, but it's called a cross wrench. And uh, thankfully, I should come in the bag. E F G. Oh, I love the alphabet. It's so informative. Such a great way to organize. Ooh, a bag within a bag. Very exciting stuff. Here you have it, folks. Um, so what we actually have here is I've laid them all out. So we have got, let me just grab the roving camera here. No, apparently I will not be grabbing it today. That will do. <laughs> I'm gonna pause you for a second. Okay guys, we're gonna start on step one, which, so Axial, I have to give props to. Now this may just be my own naivety of having a, um, never done a build before, but I have to give them props. I love a well-organized, package where you basically have everything laid out. The instructions all go along together. So kudos to you guys, Axial. Um, we're going to start with bag A being the first step. Look at that. Bag A. Good job. Uh, bag A opens it up and looks like we're going to be building. Okay, guys, here's, a, here's my disclaimer right now. I don't know all the terminology. I'm not even going to pretend to know the terminology. I will do my best as we go along. Uh, but remember, I'm doing this for the fun of it, which is really... The only reason why you should be doing it, unless, well, actually, no, that's not the only reason, but it's a really darn good reason to be doing it. So anything that's sort of, you know, if I'm not doing it right, if I'm not saying it right, I apologize ahead of time. I'm already going to say I'm going to get it wrong. I'm probably going to make some mistakes as we go along, but what's the, that's the whole point. You're supposed to be making mistakes, learning as you go. Um, my own theory is that I'm a methodical kind of gal, so... Let's just take it in step by step and see what happens. You know what? I really could use those little trays, those little magnetic trays for all these little extra parts. I think I'm going to go get one and I'll be right back. Sorry, honey, I had to use this. Okay, so there's that saying that it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission sometimes. Erin, I'm super sorry, but I had to empty all the things that were out here. I strategically left them on something else, but there are some little parts there, but I kind of, sorry about that, I had to use this. So, thank you. One, two, three. One, two, and three. Now, we also have Loctite here, and Erin was awesome about leaving me out the Loctite, so pardon my reaches through here. All right, so we're actually starting with bag A, or step one, if you will. I've already started opening up some of the smaller sub bags inside of bag A, and I'm already starting to organize them by size, by shape, and what I actually need for the very first step. Okay, so this is actually going to be a lesson in observation and a lesson in patience. That's all there, that's there. These parts right here. Oh, shoot. This is called, I've never done a build kit before, so I'm not going to get the names right. I'm going to try my darndest, but I'm telling you right now, they've done such a phenomenal job here inside the actual manual itself, giving everything their names, everything their, their proper words. I believe this is an axle locker, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and there's my ring gears, ring gears. And we're all going to assemble this together. So from what I understand with Loctite, you want to keep a handy thing on the side to help clean up. Uh, some people will use gloves. 
I won't be using gloves today because they wouldn't cover up these beautiful nails of mine. And well, that's just no good. That's just no good. And then we throw this piece on like this. You line up the screws. So you're just kind of twisting it around just to line it on up there. Don't know if you can actually see any of that part, but we will do this. Oh, there we go. The holes are in there. And the tip that I got about the Loctite was just put just a little bit on the edge there and it will thread itself in. Here it goes, guys. Well, that got a little excited. There we go. Just a bit of Loctite, he said. A little, a little bit goes a long way. Um, when less is not always, or more is not always better. Seriously, my first screws are going in. One here, this goes like this, just like in the picture. Uh, I imagine even though they've laid this out perfectly for me, um, the instructions anyways, it's going to be a bit of a steep little learning curve for me. Um, I'm not necessarily what you would say mechanically inclined. Um, I do know how to put together a recipe. Um, I can bake, I can cook, and I figured as long as you can follow instructions, anyone should be able to do this. Now I put a little bit too much Loctite on there, you can see there kind of gummying out a little bit. I'm gonna make sure and clean that part off. We don't wanna have any of these. I don't wanna be the reason the truck doesn't work. Let's just put it that way. If this truck's not gonna work, which it will work because I'm building it, it's not gonna be for a reason like that. So we need one of those parts. We're building this twice. And so leave all that there. That's from the plastic bag part. Somebody's hair came along in that one. Okay, those are my axle houses. Okay, perfect. So we've got this. This is going to be facing me just like in the picture. Just like in there, okay. And they want me to grease this arm here. And they're asking me to grease this as well. Grease those parts. The pinion gear, gotcha. Nope, it's not that one. So are these the same? Nope. So here's, a, here's my lesson as I'm going. I'm learning, like I said, as I go. These, making sure they're the pinion gears are there. They're looking like they're in great shape. We want to grease those a little bit just to make sure that they hold up quite well. This is going to sit like this. This is going to sit right above it. Oh man, that's a crazy machine. I love it. I'm assuming, oh, no, that's exactly what this is. <laughs> Finally, I'm like, yay, I get to use my utter butter. Well, maybe I should have actually got a little piece of gloves in here, but that's all right. I'm assuming the grease that's needed is not a bunch of, not a ton of grease, but we will grease it all the same. I am now going to have messy hands today, but nothing a little soap and water can't clean off. Now, I'm not too sure exactly how much grease to use because I know sometimes the, this grease can hold on to some dirt. I'm just gonna grease it so it looks like it's good enough to take some abuse because this is metal on metal friction so we want to make sure that it is nicely greased so there's my housing visually put it inside of that hole there perfect put the 221 on the bottom just drop it in there oh my gosh this is crazy guys i think i'm actually building this truck and then this guy feels like the wood just should snap on there, it feels like. Ah, 
Ah, hello, I got it. Okay. See, you're gonna share some of my successes and some of my wonderful, fantastic singing. The good thing about um, these trucks here is that while I am going to be learning for the very first time as I go, most of the parts have two sides to them. So even if I screw up the first side, I'm totally gonna to nail it on the second. There's our first piece. Let's get those long screws in there. Go on the corner there. Ding dong, that's the housemaid. Okay, let's do it again. So let's start off. I'm sure I'm not even doing it right. I'm sure I'm, people are looking at me thinking like, don't do it like that. I gotta learn folks. I gotta learn as I go. Um, Medic was able to give me a little bit of advice as we actually went along, but for the most part, this is my build. This is my, these are my mistakes to learn. This is my mess to make. Although now that I just said that out loud, that probably means he's gonna make me clean it up after. Bearing, drop it in. Let's pop this on. So there is an actual space for that. So that when that does go in, like there's a logical space pace for, like, for this to click in. That fits in there nice. Step one. So one thing I am learning as I'm going along, man, these parts are similar. So I'm going back and forth and I'm double checking and triple checking and sometimes quadruple checking just to make sure. And of course, if it doesn't work, that means it wasn't meant to work and you gotta, you probably did it right and you gotta, or sorry, you probably did it wrong and you gotta go back and redo it anyways. Excellent, my axle assembly. So my axle assemblies left and right. My axle assemblies want to make sure that they're going to be like this, so that when they set them up, one's right, one's left. Obviously, that should be one's left side, right side. For some reason, I felt the need to go over that part. So we've got the 21 that will go in first. It looks like I need a plastic part here as well. Bless a good kit. All the little tags are actually labeled with the, with the, with the numbers that you actually need, so we're going to do the right side first. I'm so glad I'm looking as I'm going. This is great. Big bearing on the ins on the inside. Okay. Pop this through. Oh man, this is crazy! I'm totally building it. This is awesome. What a sense of accomplishment when it's actually built and it's been put together. That's pretty rad in itself. So I can get that to lay down nice. kind of laying in there pseudo flat. Pop this guy through. Okay, so now we're going to attach it to the front axle. Whew. Excited already. Okay, so we're going to take this right piece, which is 31382. 31382, I bet you, oh, God bless your hearts. Note the direction. They're very particular about that. Note direction, note direction, this is up. I'm doing it exactly like the picture says. And we're going to put it in. And then I'm going to take one of those AXA117s, which are these little screws here. Let's put the bearing in. Again, bringing it up so it's just like the picture. The trick is I'm trying to get it to thread through. There's a little spacer there, and that's kind of causing me a little bit of problems. I want to be oops, sure I'm spot on. All right, we're back again. I had to figure out and just kind of look at the piece a little bit off camera just to make sure that I wasn't going crazy or overseeing, being a, doing a slight oversight or anything like that. So what I'm actually noticing here, of course, all along your axle house, there's a little divot here for the actual screw to go in. So we wanna make sure that I push it in far enough that it is in fact, 
There we go. That I now I shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, that's going way better when they actually fit properly. Let's just call them axle boots for right now. I don't even know if that's the right name. I actually, I know it's not the right name, but right now at this particular point, no, it doesn't really bother me a heck of a lot. I'm just putting the pieces together um, in, in, not in a temporary space, but almost like trial fitting them together before I actually go in and make it more permanent. No, it moves, that's a good thing. All right, let's finish building these axles and then I can go make, you know, tacos. So we've got, looks like some covers. I'm just following the picture guys. It's really all it comes down to. What oh. is this mom? Well, this is my rear axle. So what we do here is we put it in. Actually, you know what they want me to do is they want me to tighten these things first. So we follow the instructions, right? Yeah. Yeah. Functions. What, what are the instructions? According to my instructions, this is how it's supposed to go. Yeah, what are those red things? Those red things? I don't need them yet, but you know what? We're probably gonna find it on our next step. Can you help me? Yeah. Yeah, good. Perfect. We go nice and slow. There we go, perfect. And then we turn the same other, are you ready to do this one too? Ready? Three. Four. Nice and slow. Can you say something for me, Mom? I just built a rear axle house. Can you say it? Axle house? Axle house. That's right. There we go. Rear one, done. Front one, check. All we need now is the rest of the vehicle. Okay, you ready? Guess what I did today? I built two axles today for the very first time on my new truck. Remember that big box that was here? I'm building it right now. But you know what we have to do now? We gotta go make dinner. So now I did all of my axles and can you say bye to everyone? Bye everybody. Bye. Let's go make some dinner.